Well, it gives me great pleasure um, to introduce the next session. My name is Trevor Sargent, and I just want to thank uh, Nessa uh, Childers, MEP, um, for facilitating us here in the European Parliament offices, and also, obviously, Green Foundation Ireland is well known to me as uh, my, my Green Party um, credentials will be known to all, I'm sure. But um, particularly my interest in this session stems from my role as former Minister for Food and Horticulture. Interested to hear uh, my colleague Tom Hayes uh, earlier, um, carrying forward uh, some of the work uh, that, that was done in my time in the department. Um, but it, it for us today is about looking to the future. And the, the future of food is one of those issues, as um, Deputy Aim McQueeve uh, said, we, we, we we can, may, might be able to do without our iPhones, we won't be able to do without food. But the question really is, uh, in the future, have we really got what it takes um, to feed the growing population? And have we got it, what it takes to do it sustainably? Um, and those two questions really become quite a, um, a good debate if one is interested um, the people here are interested, but it is a matter that is often overlooked. Uh, and I hear the, you know, the, the general view that um, you know, we just stick at it and work harder and we'll all be fine. Um, it doesn't really stack up when you start looking at the, the issues. And our panel today is made from um, a very distinguished set of, of people, um, and they will be giving us... Uh, a view from very much personal experience and from political experience. Um, and just to introduce, so you know who we are uh, up at the top table, um, we have Senator Catherine Riley, uh, who's Sinn Féin spokesperson, and will um, give us um, a, a, a very important view from Sinn Féin. Um, Eddie Downey, who's Deputy President of the Irish Farmers Association. Um, recovered from the ploughing and uh, looking very fresh, but um, has, a, has a lot of work and a lot of responsibility with the IFA. Um, Michael Kelly, um, who will be known to many of us uh, as a reporter as well as a, a, a grower, and as the founder of Grow It Yourself International, I think it's fair to say now. Um, M Michael, it has uh, stretched its wings as a movement um, whose time has come, I, I guess, is, is the best way I can put it. Um, and Gillian Westbrook, who is the general manager of the Irish Organic Farmers and Growers Association, um, who I know many years from my time in, in agriculture as well, um, prior to that with the um, Irish Cattle and Sheep Farmers Association, indeed, and has a long track record in food and agriculture. Um, each speaker will speak for 15 minutes, um, but I just want to set a context because it really is tempting at a debate like this to look at the present and hope that what we have in, in the terms of the present, in terms of our food safety we spoke about earlier, will be possible to continue rolling out and take account of the changes that come about. Um, I think viability in farming is still far from clear, far from obvious. We heard Minister Tom Hayes talk about the change, the dynamic that comes even in the mushroom sector, where you go from um, a few hundred growers down to a few dozen. But because we're producing more and because it's all very well regulated and because the market uh, is there and it's all viable and to that extent, that's seen as a price worth paying. Less farmers, more food, well, that's life. However, I really feel it's not a sustainable way to go. And if we are to be sustainable, um, there's another model that has to be um, looked at. Um, I'm not just talking about sustainability in terms of food production. I'm talking about sustainability in terms of livelihood, in terms of quality of life, in terms of life itself. Um, I mean, a, a farming friend of mine um, was asked the question, uh, what would you do if you won the lottery? And he said, I'd expand my farm and, use, and, and continue farming until the money was gone. Um, and I'm sad to say uh, that man is no longer with us. He ended his own life. 
Um, and unfortunately, he's not uh, alone in that regard. There, there is a, uh, a mix of um, people in any sector. And in, in farming, there are the winners and there are the losers. And I think as a country, we need to be cognizant um, of uh, supporting all, um, not just um, the people who have managed to put the other people out of business. Um, and there, there, there will be uh, difficult decisions to be taken, obviously, uh, but there is a need for the, um, the control of farming to be looked at. This is a book that um, at the GIY conference in Waterford recently was launched, um, in Ireland anyway, uh, but it's an American book, uh, Foodopoly. Um, the, the writer was a keynote speaker, Winona Hauter, um, The Battle Over the Future of Food and Farming in America. I know we talked about America and the diet not being great and all that. However, what happens in America very often is a template of what comes across the Atlantic. Um, if you look at GM and various other massive um, corporate interests, it tends to be the, Amer the American driving it, the, the Americans driving it. Um, and that is the domination of food. And that domination of food is invested in a smaller and smaller number of stakeholders and the shareholders are more interested obviously in, well they have to be interested in making a profit, that's why they're shareholders. Um, so there is that question of control of food. Um, and even when I was in the department, it was clear to me that um, we, we, we did work on farmers markets, we did work with artisan uh, people, um, and a lot of work was done there. However, when it came to, for capital grants in horticulture, some of the biggest grants that I was there to sign off on were things such as parsnip polishers. Now, parsnip polishers don't feed people. They suit a supermarket buyer. And they are there simply because that supermarket is trying to put the other supermarket out of business. And the farmer is like uh, the grass in Africa when the elephants fight. It's trampled on. So that is what you know the supermarket culture, which we all depend on, because it seems to be the only place you're going to get certain types of food. Uh, unless you have markets and so forth available. But even more fundamentally than that is the question of how our food is produced. And I'll just leave it at that because uh, it is something that will be taken up by others, hopefully as well. Um, oil is a sunset industry. I know it doesn't seem like that, but it is at the last throes of, of its existence in terms of its 150 years and uh, the... the, 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 the <coughs> The fracking and all the rest of it and all that debate is a symptom of that, um, the last, um, I won't say the last thing of a dying wasp, but, but it's certainly um, a wasp that we're all very dependent on. Um, and food, more than most things, is dependent on oil. So if in the West we're getting um, one calorie of food by using 10 calories of oil, um, then it's clear in 2020 that's not going to get any easier. It's going to be a lot worse. So really, the, 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 this conference is such an important watershed in terms of thinking beyond uh, 2013 that I, I really hope it, um, it, it sparks a debate beyond these four walls, which will gain its own momentum. Um, uh, I, I mean, I'm living in, in Wexford now. The Wexford people last week had an article from a strawberry farmer looking to Minister Tom Hayes for grant assistance because it had cost him for one month of gas, one month of natural gas, to, to, to grow strawberries, to get the early strawberries, €40,000 of a bill. Now that's under today's prices. 2020, what will that gas cost him? What will the oil cost that will be involved in the mass globalisation of that food that we depend on selling to wherever we, we do in the world? Those are issues which are um, going to grow, and we put our head in the sand at our peril. Um, add to that population growth, uh, which requires about 5 million hectares uh, per year extra somewhere in the world to feed that, and climate change, which is taking away about 10 million hectares. So there's a pincer movement, and our um, decision makers 
have uh, a challenge to, uh, to face, but also we do. And that's why I'm glad that we have a range of speakers here from the uh, IFA, which is really leading in terms of our food production uh, overall. Um, and, but it's not to say that farmers only will, producing, will be producing food in the future. And that's why it's so important we have Michael Kelly as well as Gillian and, and Catherine who are able to cover different aspects of the smaller and the large scale producers as well. So with that in mind, I'd like you to welcome uh, Catherine Riley from Sinn Féin as our first speaker today. Thank you.